wound up not showering for about four months, which, which changed the environment completely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fame can lead celebrities down some strange paths. And this particular actor... What are you doing? And this particular actor is no exception. So it would just waft all through all everything. <laughs> it would just waft up and go right to his nose. So a lot of the movie, Brad is like, you know, like doing this number. <laughs> throughout most of the film. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ridiculous Shia LaBeouf moments. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at those weird, strange, and or unexpected times, incidents, events, moments, and so on in the career and public appearances of actor Shia LaBeouf. The guy doesn't really need this, you know, drunk child no. actor coming at four in the morning to buy pimple cream. We may not know what goes on in Shia's head, but you have to give him credit for trying to keep himself relevant and in the public eye. We're excluding moments from his movies, though, as that is a list for another day. Break down the old enough components of energy on a single constant K rate, extrapolate reach of the. <laughs> Number 10. Shia LaBeouf is a cannibal. Living in the woods, Shia LaBeouf. Killing for sport, Shia LaBeouf. Eating all the bodies. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Actor, director, performing artist, and cannibal? Uploaded onto SoundCloud in 2012, the song Shia LaBeouf was written by Rob Cantor and details a fictional encounter with the actor in the woods at night. He's following you, about 30 feet back. He gets down on all fours and breaks into a sprint. He's gaining on you. Shia LaBeouf. The style of the song is reminiscent of early radio drama recordings, and its popularity inspired the meme, Actual Cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Two years later, a music video with an extended version of the song was released. And all we can say is, it's a feast for the eyes. The giant papercraft Shia heads are a delicious addition to the ensemble. Showing himself to be a good sport, Shia even has a cameo in the video. Number 9. Walgreens Arrest I wish to stay with the boy. If that is his choice. Yes. Following the success of the first Transformers movie, the newly 21-year-old LeBeuf was charged with a misdemeanor for criminal trespassing, and his mugshots were featured in a number of tabloids and newspapers. Uh, so, so I got pretty wasted in Chicago and wound up celebrating in Walgreens. What Walgreens, the drugstores. Yeah, the drugstore. Yeah. The most ridiculous part, though, was the story behind the arrest. Craving cigarettes, the actor made several trips to the drugstore, each time in a different outfit. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, what, what's the problem with him having seen you once? Well, he, can't, he can't see you again. I know, to a, to a normal person, uh -huh. it, it makes complete sense Is what you're saying. Is this Walgreens policy, one visit what? a day? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but kept forgetting to purchase them due to his drunken state. The Walgreens security guard was clearly aware of his intoxication. He's looking at me, he's kind of giggling to himself. And now I'm starting to feel like, well, it's really not that funny, guy, uh, you know? Yeah. After refusing to leave the third time, LaBeouf was detained until police arrived. After this experience, LaBeouf came to the conclusion that drinking and shopping was just as bad as drinking and driving. Well, good. I, I hope that uh, that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Me too. Although it's uh, pretty silly. Number 8. Broadway Arrest Witnesses saying the star was yelling, even slapping audience members. Shia should have amended his comment about drinking and shopping to include attending a Broadway show while inebriated. I thought he was working on a roll or something. He just walked up to the bar inside of Cabaret and grabbed a strawberry and fed it to some woman off of her plate and then tipped the bartender and ran out. In 2014, the actor was arrested for disorderly conduct and criminal trespassing during a performance of Cabaret in New York. You seem to have gone crazy since the last time I saw you. Is it that does true? seem that way, doesn't it? <laughs> LaBeouf later gave a detailed account of the events that led up to his arrest on Jimmy Kimmel, describing how he even grabbed the butt of Alan Cumming as the actor was performing in the musical. Yeah, he's, he's seducing me. I mean, he's the sexiest <laughs> man I've ever seen. I'm thinking, you know, and I don't just slap and slap, but I slapped and grabbed him. Like, I grabbed the whole cheek because I wanted the party right here in my pants. I, just wanted, <laughs> I wanted to grab the whole party. Cumming gave his own version of the incident on Conan, 
and described the sense of unease in the room while also sympathizing with LaBeouf. I thought he'd made a very good recovery, and, I, and he did say that the reason he did it was that I was the sexiest man he'd ever seen, so. <laughs> I mean, you gotta go with that. Number seven, Shia, seagulls, sardines, and the sea. When the seagulls follow the trawler, it is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. A cryptic message or the ramblings of a troubled man. During a press conference for the movie Nymphomaniac, Shia was asked about his decision to star in a movie that featured multiple sex scenes. I can't feel anything. Huh? I can't feel anything. LaBeouf replied by quoting former footballer Eric Cantona, who used the line about seagulls and sardines during a press conference in 1995. When the seagulls follow the trawler, it's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cantona's comment was likening the media to pests that were following him for additional gossip material. True to the saying, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. LaBeouf faithfully recreated Cantona's delivery before leaving his own panel, baffling everyone in attendance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number six, Shia LaBeouf freestyling. Oh shit, it's me, I'm so disgusting. Just when we thought we'd seen it all, Shia surprises us with the unexpected. In June 2015, a video of LaBeouf doing a freestyle rap was leaked. You can see me, I'm rapping shit. Oh shit, I'm still rapping shit, and I'm still acting shit, and I'm still active with the shit I'm active with. While there were viewers who applauded his artistic expression, many others were quick to condemn the actor. Case in point, MC and music producer Pre The Honey Dark, accused LaBeouf of lifting lyrics from the anomaly song, Perfectionist. This isn't the first time that Shy has been accused of plagiarism, and even though he never claimed the words to be his own, it's definitely bad form to be freestyling with another artist's words. Rare commodity, the quality is what it's gotta be, and my philosophy is much farther than what your eyes can see. <laughs> Number five. Hashtag I am sorry, performance art installation. Following his strange exit at the Nymphomaniac press conference, as previously mentioned, and another strange incident at the film's premiere, to be mentioned in a later entry, LaBeouf staged a performance at an LA gallery titled Hashtag I am sorry. The art exhibit ran for about five days, with people lining up for the opportunity to meet the actor in person. He, he was emotionally pouring out the whole time. Yeah. Non-stop. Non-stop. The performance had LeBeuf remaining silent and crying while sitting at a table, dressed in a tuxedo and wearing a paper bag over his head with the words, I am not famous anymore, written on it. I didn't even, I wasn't even sure maybe you hired uh, a, a, a guy, just a, a Craigslist guy or something. Visitors were given the option to choose and use any of the props made available at the art installation, which included a ukulele, a bottle of Jack Daniels, and an Indiana Jones whip. It was really impressive what you're doing, I have to say. I mean, to be here for a couple days and put yourself on the line, I don't know, I couldn't do it. While people ridiculed LaBeouf's latest stunt for being weird and seemingly desperate, Others expressed empathy and admiration for the actor. And everyone thinks he's so crazy, but it seemed like the least crazy thing I've seen him do in a while. Number four, Shia's GoPro hashtag interview. Considering all the hectic events in LaBeouf's life, it's clear that the actor is on a soul-searching mission. In 2014, he posted this hour-long video entitled hashtag interview which features him and dazed music editor Amy Cliff sitting in silence, except for a few chuckles, <laughs> and recording each other with GoPro cameras strapped to their heads. Prior to the interview, LaBeouf and Cliff had corresponded through email, and it was the actor's idea that they meet in person without speaking. At times, the silence is awkward, but it's also openly honest and intriguing to watch. However, it would probably be less unnerving if he blinked more often. Number three, just do it. Just do it! A clever Nike ad? 
Nope, just Shia yelling at you to do whatever it is you're putting off and make your dreams come true. This viral Just Do It motivational speech is actually an excerpt from a collaborative video art project titled Hashtag Introductions for a London Arts College. Just do it! Make your dreams come true! The original video contains over 30 short pieces, with LeBeuf performing in front of a green screen with props. Sometimes I forget what your bike looks like. Just Do It is a hit not only for its inspirational message and Shia's exaggerated body movements, but also for its being cleverly incorporated in YouTube videos and iconic movie scenes after its online release. I'm afraid I can't do that. Yes, you can! What's the problem? Just do it! Providing the internet with an entertaining new meme and hours of oh, fun. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Do it! Number 2. Actual Serial Plagiarist <laughs> The Things That People Do For Art's Sake at the 2012 Cannes Film Festival, Shia LaBeouf premiered the short film HowardCantor.com, which he directed to wide acclaim. It wasn't until a year later when the short film was released online, though, that people noticed its striking similarity to another artist's work. As it turns out, the premise of the short film was derived from Daniel Claus' Justin M. Damiano. The majority of the script and visuals matched the 2007 comic, and while Shia later admitted to being inspired by Claus, he failed to explain why he didn't give credit where credit is due. The actor apologized through his Twitter account. Copying isn't particularly creative work. Being inspired by someone else's idea to produce something new and different is creative work. But some critics noted that the apology itself seemed to have been plagiarized from a Yahoo Answers post. Shia even apologized to Mr. Claus by paying for skywriting messages. He put this over Hollywood. Mr. Claus, he lives up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. America! <laughs> Mama! Mama! America! I have a heart rate monitor on my chest as we speak. Uh, it's public, my heart rate, uh, so the data is being sent to a website. It has sort of a, a heart graphic that's moving to the beat of my heart. Number one, I am not famous anymore. In February 2014, Shia attended the Berlin premiere of Nymphomaniac, wearing a tuxedo and covering his head with a paper bag that had the words I am not famous anymore written in bold. Just a month prior to all this, and in light of the series of rocky events that saw him labeled as troubled and crazy, LeBeuf had announced his retirement from public life. The display on the red carpet happened an hour after he'd stormed out of the press conference for the movie. To the public and critics, it seemed clear that Shia was making yet another statement. And surprise, surprise, the paper bag incident would appear in his hashtag I am sorry performance art installation two days later. Well played, Shia. Well played. I thought for sure people were going to come in and be super mean because it's what I had been reading, but it wasn't that way at all. It was very human. Once, once they got in there, everything changed. Mm -hmm. you know, they stopped looking at me as like an object. They started looking at me as like a human. Do you agree with our list? No, 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 no! Which ridiculous Shia moment was your favorite? For more eccentric top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I swear to God, if you're jumping down from up there... You should get to the point. God damn it, Shia, I'm calling the cops. What are you waiting for?